grabbing this gravel crap again. That way's potholes and mud. This way's water and hard ground and water. Fire department is at the McDonald's. What a ladder truck. No McDonald's for me today. All right, I'm eating before I left home. Dispatch said we're getting a broom truck. I don't know if we're getting just a broom truck or truck and broom. I'm hoping we're just getting the truck, to be honest. It looks like tying a broom down in the nasty weather. We'll find out eventually here, won't we now? not nice and slushy.
What's up you guys, FSC Trucking. We just got loaded up, got the MB broom over here in Chilton, Wisconsin. There's the truck that drives the broom. Those trucks are pretty cool, and then the broom itself. I'll show you on the other side. And of course the real star to show, that's Orwell. Orwell's my 1984 Peterbilt 362 cab over. Got a lot of new subscribers, so I'll explain. George Orwell wrote a book, 1984. Peterbilt built this truck in 1984. Well, it sticks. And if you know anything about me, well, it might make sense to you. With that being said, let's go check it out. Now, Orwell just recently got out of the shop after a long time of getting some work done on it. Water leak, new starter, and a handful of other things, including a whole new set of exhaust stacks. And of course, this is the first trip here, first trip anywhere, and they're dirty already. Oh no, what will I do? Oh no, there's carbon on them, and they're dirty. Look, there's salt, and water, and ugh. Of course, we got the green APU hidden underneath. Now that caused a lot of issue with clearances. Well, green APU. Let's kind of look at how it's routed, the exhaust. But we got some stuff in store for the green APU. There was the trouble, clearance around those tubes. But if you watch my most recent videos, you'll see that the whole process of what it took to get this job done between making the, between making the exhaust stacks the way they were always supposed to be, modifying Peterbilt's original design, and then making it so the clear battery box, and it just wasn't the easiest thing on planet Earth. So there was a whole video series on that job alone, plus a few other things. Plus we also introduced new people that work for me now. I got Maggie and Dave. Maggie's a welder by trade and uh, does awesome work. Dave, he's a 17 year truck mechanic, does awesome work. You watch him work together. I'll also tell you the camaraderie between those two uh, makes my heart warm. I should have hired people years ago, but nonetheless, there we are. And that's the broom I was talking about earlier. And of course, this is the truck it goes on. It has to be detached because the broom's quite wide. It's for airports and stuff. Now, I don't know which one it is, but there's an engine in this compartment and an engine in that compartment. I think this is the engine that drives the truck. And this is the engine that runs the hydraulics that spins this. So, yeah, twin engines up there. Check that out. So where's all this madness going? Well, it's going to Portsmouth, Virginia. Um, way back we dropped a striker over there and we had nothing but trouble over there. But granted at that time I didn't have a Twit card. But I do now. So, should be no troubles. And I made the appointment already. Today's Monday, we're dropping it Thursday. So let's go ahead and get in the truck, get the GoPro set up. Be the first time out with the Now I've been sitting here for probably two, three hours. And everybody makes comments about the open pipes on the top with the rain. And it's been raining kinda. But the truck's been running. So we're going to set the GoPros up. We can see how it does. Oh yeah, can't wait. All right, enough of me yapping. Let's get on down the line, shall we? Hit that like and subscribe since I hit that brake knob for you. Get ready to get rolling. going to do is we're going to go back to uh we're going to go back to my shop and I'll leave out tomorrow take care of a couple things today at home get some video edited some work done ultimately saying now that we got a load on them are we weighing we're weighing only 40,000 so yeah we're got enough weight on them to let them talk If it was 
use the King County truck I brought with me or the uh, one before that where Orwell had froze up right there in that lot and get loaded pneumatically. I don't remember. Definitely a different sound to Orwell now, which is good. Sounds better, I think. comments about the stacks the flat top the lack of a rain flapper it's amazing how people worry so much about that it's not the first truck that ran like that and I my other one my three step my 379 I had the exact same stacks well smaller they were sixes same cut flat top cut I never had a problem other than you know if it sat for a little while in the rain there was some water in there, so when you fired it up, it spit the water out, and it was black, and, you know, the truck was yellow. But other than that, there wasn't any problem with it. People don't understand, they, you look at the amount of pipe under there. To raise to that level, to get up just to the turbo, you're probably talking 20 gallons of water. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of water, so... And if Orwell sits outside any major length of time, you just lift up buckets and put them on the top of the stacks and the rain don't go in there. And if we're about the wind blowing the rain off, attach a string and a bungee cord to it or a string and a weight. I just, I like that look. I don't like the tink, 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 tink of the, of a rain cap. Plus after a while, that thing moves all the time. It's always moving and shifting and it wears out. And then you got to climb up there and get a new one. Just, I don't know, to me it's just not worth it. I like it the way it is, and that's how it's gonna stay. But you guys will see over time how much of a problem it will not be. Oh man, that's it.
the camaraderie between Maggie and Dave both. Dave being a truck mechanic and Maggie being a welder with the job that we just did. Awesome, awesome crew. I'm glad it worked out great. I, they, they get along good, they work well. Um, like I may have said, I know I said in the last video actually that I put a lot of banter between all three of us in the shop because it really felt good to have that. I, I talked about so much that I thought was not gonna be on camera that's why, like, we were talking and I might have turned the camera off. I didn't think any of it was going to make the video. But it just was so good that I felt I had to include it. But I'm feeling good. I'm getting a lot more done. Um, the condition of Orwell is just going to continue to improve. There are some more things I want to get done with Orwell, and we're going to start addressing them. But you gotta bear in mind, I was down, I haven't driven for quite a long while, about maybe a month, month and a half or so. So, last load I did was right after Tim's shop burned down, Tim Gentry. So, that'll give you a rough idea when the last load it was. But, you know what, it's damn near March. And, uh, it's getting on to where it shouldn't be really super stupid cold anymore. And, yeah, it still snows in Wisconsin. I mean, it's in Wisconsin. Hello. Welcome to winter. It's not a biblical storm. It's not a storm of the... I had to put on a news this morning. A historic storm. Not historic. It snows in Wisconsin every year. But it's getting on springtime. I uh, got some cool stuff coming up. Dropped a Harley off at the dealer to get uh, the service done on it get it checked out, make sure everything's adjusted, tighten the belt, you know, all that crap, get it ready to go. Now we can go riding this year. Um, Goldwing, I need to start addressing the Goldwing, getting it put back together. Sadly, I haven't ridden it in a long while, but it's, it's needing to be ridden. Uh, we got some trips planned for the Razor, which I love the Razor, but to be honest, it's become a dealer queen. Um, run it for a bit, take it for service, sits there for two, three months waiting on parts. It's just not been the most fun piece of equipment. And nowadays, this time of year, you really can't use it much anyway, so I guess you can, but you gotta tow it a good distance to do it. So, eh, it is what it is. But we definitely got a lot of stuff going with the toys. I still dream about those original subscribers would know about boat goals. Remember that? Boat goals. Well, the boat's still sitting with a crack block. I need to just order the block and build a build an engine for it. But I'm not trying to go with a standard 454. I'm trying to go one with the 4.50 inch bore, not one with the four and a quarter bore. That way I'm closer to 500 cubic inches or just a little over 500 cubic inches actually. But I want one made that way, not a 454 that's been poured. I want one that was built to be bored even more if I wanted to. In other words, the stock one has non-Siamese cylinders, and the one I want has Siamese cylinders because of the bigger board. And yet, and yes, my stern drive can handle the power of a slightly larger engine. It is, uh, is it a Bravo 2 or a Bravo 3? I forget. It's one of the Bravo series. I can't remember. But it is. it will handle that kind of power, so that's fine. Need a new route drive anyway. I'm just going to have the one I have sent out as a core and get a rebuilt one to come in. Just like the repo boat.
they got that bridge over there fixed now. I gotta check and see if this year it'll have the all the lots open except for uh, the one or two or I don't know if they ever got their got crap figured out with the Menasha lock or I don't know. I probably ought to look into that to be honest. Did stuff with that in the older videos. It's real cool going through the locks with the boats. Gotta go way back in the channel. Approaching a railroad crossing. But that was a lot of fun. That was. So, you know, goals. Want to do it again. Want to do more of it. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, you, I tell people all the time, you got to get out and do stuff that's fun. You can't always just work all the time. I mean, I get it. That's why we work hard so we can afford toys, right? But got to get out here and play with them, too. this railroad crossing and then uh, make the left of the light stay on 55 That'll take the ride home National Main Line. Circle around another traffic circle. Actually, oh, you see it the front end slid just a touch. In the last video, when we left home, or rather the shop, to get down here, it got it was nasty leaving the, uh, my shop. And it rained then it froze and while it rained it washed all the salt off the road so then it refroze and it was like a slush it was a problem one thing for sure to do he didn't want to know anything about it it was a handful coming up the road my shop's on A lot 
of wheel work, a lot of slush. See the further north we go, the better. <laughs> yeah, better. Air quotes. guys in there. shop right there obviously it was in the back 